Thank you. Hello. There we go. Yeah. Peace and blessings. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm Elise. I will be moderating this with you. Uh, so we'll just do some one-on-one -on -one questions from everyone. And uh, if you need anything, I'll be here. Okay. All right. So All right. Rachel from Extra, can we start with you for a question? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hi. Andre, hi. First of all, I want to say Delta Sigma Theta Sorority hey. Incorporated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You know, I had to start off with that word. Yes. <laughs> um, congratulations, though, on uh, the award for sure. And, you know, this year's celebration with Black Cinema comes at such a bittersweet time. Sweet because we have the new administration with Vice President Harris in office, but bitter because we're dealing with so much division still in our country. What does it mean for you to be honored right now for this event? Uh, you know what, I was actually, it's funny that you asked that because I was speaking um, uh, to a friend about this just the other day and it was, I think what it means to me is that we're hopefully, we're being seen and, and possibly for the first time truly being seen, you know, and it's because we've been making noise and we've been having these marches and we've been you know, and, and there's obviously been moments, huge moments and, um, and um, victories throughout history, but really, really, really being seen. And I think not only are we being seen, but I think uh, the, the idea, the structure of systemic oppression is actually being seen for the first time and, and really for how nebulous it is. So I think for me, it's promising because I, I think a big part of us moving forward as a society and, and sort of eradicating all of these prejudices are telling our stories stories that have intentionally been suppressed or the narrative has been changed to limit the scope of our struggle and our contribution. So it's, it's promising and being seen, I think is visibility is a huge part of, of, of moving forward, so. Yes, thank Great. you. Thank you. Uh, Ricky from Celeb Page will come to you next. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Andrew Day, how are you? Hi. Hey, hey, Ricky Cornish, how you be? <laughs> I'm doing so well, and I'm so thrilled to talk to you today. Thank you for making the time. Let me congratulate you. I'm so thrilled for the United States versus Billie Holiday, which I cannot believe that it's coming out so soon. People are already raving about your performance, but I have to ask you, you know, for the younger generation that might not know a whole lot about Billie Holiday, what do you hope people will take away by watching this film? And what do you hope for in terms of Billie Holiday's legacy in 2021 and beyond? Hmm. You know, I, 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 I simplify it. I always joke, but I simplify it by saying that Billie Holiday was a gangster. Like, and that's <laughs> as simply as I know where I'm from to say that means layers of different things. But it, it means that, I mean, she was, what I want people to know more than anything is that she was not a tragic drug addict and that she was an addict and that there were lots of tragedies in her life, but she was not a victim and she cannot be boiled down to a tragic drug addict and to understand that it was intentional that her legacy was boiled down to that. Um, but that she was actually truly the godmother of civil rights and, and to remember that it was her singing Strange Fruit in defiance of the government um, and the death of Emmett Till that reinvigorated Thurgood Marshall and the civil rights movement as we know it. She was fighting and letting the world know that America, and not a fringe group, but America as a culture was lynching black people. That means lynching is a mob killing. That includes the judicial system and the police and you know city officials and, and councils. And so she was telling the world about this. It was a poem written by Abel Maripol, but she was singing it so the world would know. And she was doing this largely, almost completely on her own. And unfortunately to speak to many of uh, the black women in the room, we understand you know what that's like and now, but let alone in the 30s, the 40s and the 50s. So I want people to understand that she was a civil rights leader and you, I, need, I want people to think of her when they think of Martin Luther King, when they think of Malcolm X, when they think of you know, Angela Davis and, 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 and Bobby Seale, and when they think of these, these leaders, peaceful or militant, you, Billie Holiday's name should be at the forefront, if not one of the genesis of, of that movement. So beautifully said, thank you so much. Of course, of course, yes, thank you. All right, Noel, I'm coming over to you next. Thank you, Andra, how are you today? No, I'm blessed, how are you? Marvelous, absolutely, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We are fortunate, uh, not just by your presence, but also the performance that you offered. Uh, it's powerful, 
uh, it speaks volumes um, beyond your voice. It speaks volumes beyond that. So thank, thank you so much for that. Um, when I look at this film, there were so many scenes that were just all inspiring. Mm. Do you remember that one scene for you when you performed it that you said, oh, we've got something special. We've got something special. Uh, you know, it's, um, you know what it is? It's two scenes. And one is very obvious and one is not as obvious, but they're for two different reasons. You know, when we did the, um, obviously the lynching scene is a huge one. And uh, because it, the scene was done as a one which honestly, all of this verbiage and all of this one is all new to me. So if I use something wrong, please correct me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, a one means one shot all the way through. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> but so we did this as a one and <clears throat> and it was interesting. I, I, I think that um, there was such a quiet moment on set and there were so many signs, I think spiritually that happened during the scene that we knew like, oh, this was like, this was something that was supposed to happen before us maybe, you know? And, and um, but it was also really troubling because it was heartbreaking to watch. It's particularly the brilliant choice of Lee to lynch the mother, because I think it's, it's almost sadly easier for us to imagine it as a man, but women were lynched and children were lynched. And so I think it's um, that, that he chose to use her to do that and to look at her doing that and to see those children watching this and to see them wailing. You know, you have everyone on set felt this overwhelming need to protect them, not just in the scene, but them and what they represent in future generations for our generations to never have to see this or go through this again. The other part of it was that I, during the scene, and I have to say this candidly because it was a point of frustration. It was something I really had to reconcile in myself because I didn't like that when I'm a lynching is a horrific sight. It's a horrible thing. You know, it's, it's, and it's almost nothing worse. And I think that the fact that I had to pull from familial trauma in order to fully emotionally realize what I needed for that moment made me go, whoa, this should be enough, but we're too familiar. We as a community are too familiar with loss. We're too familiar with tragedy and, 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 and trauma of this magnitude. And so, which makes us also equally victorious, but I, but I realized in that moment, I don't want, we're desensitized to a degree and I don't want that for our future generation and for those kids. The other part of it, more simply put, was the scene where she's in Baltimore, she's back home and she's singing a pig foot and a bottle of beer. <laughs> and I love the idea of Billie Holiday crowd surfing. So, <laughs> but um, it, for me, I love that. And it made me feel like we had something special because the, I hate to call them extras, but our cast, this smaller role cast, were all so committed and were so involved and I, I was lost in that moment. And to me, that was her moment of just her at home and human Billy. I want to see activist Billy. I want to see traumatized Billy. I want to see victorious Billy. I want to see human, fun loving Billy as well, too. And so that's what that was really, really special, special to me. Thank you so, so much. Appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you so much. Sammy, I'm going to come over to you next. Sammy. Oh. Wait, Sammy, there, there we, go. we go. Well, first I want to say what an honor it is to speak with you today. Wise, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. And my thing, I what I want to ask you is what was the biggest challenge about playing the role for you? <laughs> uh, this is going to sound, first of all, <laughs> there, the whole thing. <laughs> like, I, there's no, this was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, physically emotionally, mentally, it was a ton of emotional baggage and things I had to sort of dredge up and live in and be present that I, I thought, honestly, I had sort of prayed about and let go of, you know, and, and so this um, dealing with those things and using them and holding on to them oftentimes would make me angry because, I, you know, there's certain people and certain memories that you just want to, I'm probably not supposed to say fuck you on camera, but I'm still cussing, it'll go away soon, you know, lingering things, but <laughs> But, you know, there's certain people and certain things that I just want to be like, you know, just get out of here. But I had to hold on and I had to live with these people and these memories. And and um, so, but no day was easy. And that's the thing that I, I would like people to know, the commitment by Lee, by the cast, by 
my acting coach, Tasha Smith, Tom Jones. I mean, it was a daily commitment and sacrifice. Every day was urgent. Every day was challenging. Even the fun days, you know, were required such a level of just authenticity. And you still had to have that underlying awareness of what was coming down on you all the time. So, um, but I will tell you, as I sit here now, the most challenging thing has been letting her go. And I don't know that even as I sit here in front of you right now that, that I, I don't know, that I'm a whole person or that I know who I am. The, the idea that Lee would say to me, you got to let Billy go now was terrifying. And it's not as much. I think, you know, I feel more balanced now, but, um, but still not fully realized, I guess, or whoever I'm supposed to be in the season, I don't know. But I didn't know who I was. I don't know who I am outside of her. It's been three years. So the most challenging part to date has been saying goodbye because I didn't want to say goodbye. I really love her. I, I love the moment and everything. Thank you. Thank you. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Miss Carla, coming over to you. Hello. Hey, hello, Miss Andra. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, thank you. From yeah. one beauty to another. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Andra Day, when I saw you in the United States versus Billie Holiday, I was like, I couldn't believe that you had never acted before because it seemed second nature. So wow. Tasha did a wonderful job training you yes. um, for this role. Yes. You, you put your foot in it for real, for thank real. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> it's the truth. So having said that, what was the conversation like when Lee Daniels called you up and said, so yo, Andrea, I'm thinking about doing this movie and I want you to play Billie Holiday. And you were like, huh? Right. <laughs> so let me actually even like run that back and correct it because he did not hit me up and say that and did it as a matter of fact Lee and I were forced on each other by our managers and we that first conversation is so funny because I think that's probably why we enjoyed the conversation so much <laughs> because neither of us thought we should be there we was like okay let's eat these hors d'oeuvres and we'll be out you know what I mean <laughs> like because I was like I don't want to do it he was like great I don't want you to do it I was like perfect it's <laughs> like you know, so it was one of those things I, I was, but we met and we spoke and, you know, we, we, I guess he was taken by the fact that I didn't want to do the movie. I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> he was like, you didn't want it. And that was great. I was like, oh, okay. But I think it's because he says what I hear in these interviews is he says that he saw someone who didn't want to do the role and didn't really care about not care about getting into it. I cared more about Billy than I did about me playing Billy Holiday. And I just, in my head, I was, I just knew, I said, if I actually do this role, it will be probably one of the worst performances ever. I will be a stain on the legacy of Billy Holiday. And I just knew that's how it was going to go, you know? And so, but we, we connected, we connected over our insecurities. We, now we had this mutual fear that both of us had to get over. And, um, and I saw his desire and his, his desire to tell her story authentically. You know, he was so moved once he discovered he didn't know all of this about her life. And, and he was moved to the point of almost just, just, he was indignant, you know? And, and so, um, so he connected me to Tasha Smith, who became my acting coach and she, to prepare me for the audition. And I guess she sent a clip of me rehearsing or, or practicing what we were going over. So I didn't know I was being filmed. <laughs> So she recorded and she sent it to him and he said he knew from that moment on. He said, I feel like God entered the room and I knew from that moment on it was supposed to be you. For me, I was not convinced still at that point. Even when he told me I got the role, I was like, mm, did you look at every actress for this? <laughs> but so, um, but it was really, a, for me, it was a prayer. It was actually, I, I was, I consider myself, a, I like to consider myself a deeply spiritual person. And, I was reading and re realized that this might be a moment where I'm called to do an act of great faith. And that was it for me, the idea of vindicating her legacy and his authenticity. It was that perfect storm that made me go, okay, let's, 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 you know, let's jump into it. Let's dive in, you know. Baby, you were born to play this role straight up. <laughs> oh, Thank that's you. a blessing. Thank you. You were born to play that role. You, you know that and you believe that and you walk in, you walk Thank in that you. truth. I okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. Uh, Dewey, go ahead. Miss Day, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Well, I, I wanted to touch on something you just mentioned, ma'am, and it is your preparation. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about uh, Mr. Daniel's preparation, but we haven't really got into what you did to prepare for this role. A mm -hmm. remarkable performance, to say the least. Mm -hmm. And if you could touch on briefly just the toll it took on you once everything was done, because I can imagine you were about as spent as a human being could have been. Yeah, I was um, hungry. <laughs> By the end, I was, I, I, I definitely was a fractured person. I was a fractured, you know, and like I said, it's still a little residual, but I, I am a fractured in a good way. It's, it's one thing when you're fractured for someone like her and for her story and for that purpose, you know, then, then it's not really necessarily, you just know you're meant to be broken and to be used for this. And that's something different, but the preparation was definitely a lot. I, I, um, I was already a big fan of hers, but so it, I enjoyed it. I didn't even, almost didn't look at it as work. I got to just obsess without looking crazy about Billie Holiday day in and day out. I got to speak like her. And uh, so I, with Tasha Smith, she really helped me to, cause I had, you know, all of this research and she was like, this is a beautiful well of research you've built up, but now we have to inform her with you, which was a very scary part for me. <clears throat> and then Tom Jones was my dialect coach. And um, we worked on her voice and really i i told him what resonated with me the most was her laugh and so and then he helped me to follow her breath to to really find her voice but the preparation was every book i mean every documentary the the good ones and the bad ones you know whether they were scathing remarks about her or great remarks about her i i apparently you can reach the end of the internet <laughs> which I didn't know, but the internet will tell you, you have reached the end. So I was like, refresh, hold on, wait a minute, refresh. But um, so I, every photo, every interview I could find. Um, and then there are just beautiful moments of her rehearsals or when she's recording, she's making sides is what they called them at the time. And, um, and I love when she messes up and you can hear her fall out of it and she gets frustrated with herself as most singers know. And says she'll pay for it. So it's all every little bit I could find of her voice, everything about her, her perfumes, the jewelry she wore, the clothes, um, her earrings. Uh, and then there was a wonderful auction house, actually, I found, um, I found an auction house that happened to have a letter, a handwritten letter that she wrote. It was the only thing we have that she wrote from prison and she wrote it to Joe Guy, who was her boyfriend lover at the time, played by Melvin Gregg. And then I, <laughs> these are the parts that I do not want to recommend, but I did, I don't typically smoke. I don't typically curse. It'll go away eventually, but, um, or drink alcohol or, um, or, or to be honest with you, I, I am actually abstaining as well too, just for a personal decision. But um, I, uh, so I started smoking cigarettes and I started drinking alcohol and <laughs> cussing and just generally being more sexual in my, my behaviors and, and um, more def defiant in certain things. And, and, uh, and then I lost, like 40 pounds and cut off all my hair. So it was a lot. It was a transfer, a whole transformation thing. It was all of what you would imagine it would be. It was all that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Katia, I'm going to come to you. Oops, sorry. Hi, Andra. First of all, outstanding performance. We talked about the acting. Um, let's talk a little bit about the singing because it is not like your voice. It's a different type of genre of music. It's a different type of register mm -hmm. and it's a catalog that's very well known. So what was that like? Because, you know, people know that you can sing, so they're expecting great things. How did you approach that portion of getting ready to play belly? Uh, I, you know, I knew, first of all, I knew Lee and I knew that we wanted to do her voice, her singing voice and her speaking voice. And we both, I, I told him I didn't want to do the role if I wasn't going to actually sing the songs or do, you know. Um, and I just approached it, you know, uh, just completely leaving myself. I didn't want any expectation of people, you know, wanting to hear, you know, the voice they're used to or wanting to hear. I just, I just, I wanted her, you know, but I, I, I didn't want it to be an, uh, impersonation you know and that's one of the things we talked about it had to be an interpretation so I, I did have to color it obviously with myself a little bit but um it was just listening you know I, I i obviously was a huge fan so i know her whole sort of pantheon of music but it was just listening to her and it was just loving her and it was sometimes i would listen to her music just in chronological order of when or at least the dates that we have of when it was made all the way to lady in satin which is my favorite record um and you know, 
understanding just certain things, right? Billie Holiday was also very well known for her phrasing. And so understanding what I came to understand was I thought as a fan of hers, it was just creative choices to never sing each song the same. But the reality is it was probably that as well as the different circumstances she found herself in. So she might have just come from Joe Guy. She might have just come from Getting High. She might have just come from Tallulah or wherever she was coming from colored sort of the way she would sing. So it was just, it was a deep, deep study into, into her voice, into the time period and into, you know, allowing, just allowing certain traumatic events in my own life and her life to, to sort of, um, uh, converge is that the right word you know and through through the song you know absolutely you did a beautiful job you really thank you you there thank Thank you you. (laughs) okay rachel i'm going to come back to you okay thank you so much um there is a lot of buzz surrounding your performance rightfully so um just for what you represented you know, in, in playing Billie Holiday, but then also just for what this movie means for, for the culture. And it's just so relevant in the time right now. I'm curious for you, how are you prepping for the nominations with, you know, the Oscars and the Globes coming ahead? Because you had to put yourself through so much and the emotional toll was so much for you uh, with the losing almost 40 pounds, the drinking and the smoking. Uh, what will this mean to you? You know, <laughs> um, oh man, these, I don't know. It's so funny. These questions, I feel like make me the most nervous of all of them, you know, because, because I, I, and this is not to, I'm always careful about how I answer this, A, because I don't want to just give you something regurgitated, but also because I, I have a real respect and a love for the craft of acting and the sacrifice that people make, you know, and also that people really work their whole lives for Oscars and for, you know, Golden Globes and for these awards and these accolades, you know, so I'm extremely appreciative, you know, but I I have to say before I went to set, I I never thought of it. You know what I mean? Tasha would randomly say it to me at times and it would kind of jolt me out. And I finally, I would tell her, I'd be like, I I can't, I can't hear that. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Listen to, and so she would stop mentioning it because she realized it would sort of, you know, I don't know, make me uncomfortable a little bit, but, but I, but I did, I really did. I will say I did this for the love of Billie Holiday. I did this because I felt honestly, called to do it even though I didn't want to do it and I was terrified but I had a piece about doing it um and so this the reaction that we're getting from it is something I, to be honest with you initially I, I forgot was going to be a thing right obviously there has to be press and promo so so I'm 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 just you know I'm trying to just stay focused and remember why I why I did it in the first place but also to stay in a place of gratitude so deeply because the reaction means that First of all, A, what we worked so hard on worked, you know what I mean? And and B, that her legacy is being told. I, I'm seeing people's interest in Billie Holiday just spiking and, and interest in their history is spiking. So I, I'm the awards and the accolade talk and all of this. I'm just grateful. I'm receiving it and just kind of riding the wave right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, well-deserved. Thank Not- you. <laughs> Thank, you. Step into yes, it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Steven, come over to you for your first question. Hi, how Hi, are you? You have such a warm, welcoming smile, by the oh, way. <laughs> thank you so much. I actually got, was so blessed enough to witness your voice live. I did an event in LA for the, it was a Grammy event. And okay. your voice is beautiful. Thank you now, so much. Um, you. Lee Daniels did an amazing job with you, um, the fact that you didn't, you were afraid to go into acting, and Tasha, my hometown girl, I know she definitely put yeah. that in, into you. Um, I think the that's amazing. Girl. And you, hmm? I said the fear of God, honey. Oh, oh, oh. I think with amazing is you. You mentioned that you learned a lot of different personality changes in yourself. Um, You got to experience to be more sexual and things like that. And I wonder, will we see some of that come out in your music, in the stage? Are we going to see, you know, with... with Yeah, we will. (laughs) I, you know, like I said, I have not, first of all, I was working on my album, which is coming out. I'm really excited. The first single, 
Technically, it actually dropped yesterday, but I'm terrible at social media, so nobody's gonna know about it till tomorrow. But, <laughs> but um, so I, um, so that the, actually the first song from the movie, um, the entitled Tigress and Tweed, I actually made the first single off of my album as well because I loved it so much. So you will see, I, I was making the record while I was preparing for the movie. So you will definitely see her DNA and just certain instances of things in an evolution of an artist on this project. Yes, there will definitely be a little bit more of that, you know. Oh, we can't wait, Miss Dad. You know, I have this Smith machine <laughs> in my garage, so I've been squatting, so I need to make sure the results, you know. <laughs> Very excited. No, but it, it definitely will be just sort of more colors, you know what I mean? And more of a ray, more experimentation, a little bit more of a, just a pushing of the envelope, you know, because um, I think that is all of the colors and the whole array of just being, you know, being a black woman, but being a human, you know what I mean, at large. And so, um, yes, you will definitely see definitely more of that. I still have some of my lingerie from set. So, Ooh, ooh. we can't wait to see the video. Let's I stole go. it. I stole it. So, I stole it. <laughs> All right. BJ coming to you. Great. Andra, how are you today? Congratulations. I'm, I'm great. Thank you. Wait, am I missing somebody? Am I seeing? Who am I missing? Oh, there you are. I see you. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Good seeing you. It seems so long since we've seen each other, but congrats on this honor. And when you take a look back in retrospect in your young career and now having the opportunity for your first lead actress role as Billie Holiday, mm -hmm. and she was an influencer, as we all know, in the industry, telling her story during Black History Month. What did you learn personally from Billy's life that will impact the rest of your life? And I'm also curious if Billy were alive today, which one of your songs would be her favorite? Uh, so it's actually funny that you ask that because I do believe that Tigress and Tweed would be her favorite and it's because that's why I wrote it. So that's where it really actually came from a prayer and that was the first thought that came to mind that if she was alive today, how would she have wanted to see uh, Strange Fruit evolved. And so it's really an homage to her. It's an homage to Strange Fruit, but it's also Strange Fruit for this generation. And it's, I always say, if, if, if Strange Fruit was a call to awareness, then Tigress and Tweed is truly a call to arms and a call to action, you know, for, for people who want to see equality and people who want to see progress. The only song people it will be uncomfortable with are people that are, are resistant to that, you know, and so um, I actually do believe that, and it is my favorite thing to date that I have ever written poetry or, or music. So, um, so I, I do, uh, and the thing that I think that um, grabbed me the most about, about Lady was, I didn't, you know, I say this a lot, of course, the fact that, again, she was shouldering, you know, I mean, she was the, sort of the genesis and shouldering the, the civil rights movement as we know it. But also there's just something, and I may have said this already, but there's something about her magnetism, her magnetism. She, it was so, the government was going after her. Everyone hated her while everyone simultaneously loved her. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. And so, um, wait, did I use simultaneously, right? Uh, fact check me after the interview. <laughs> Thank you, Dewey. <laughs> Um, so, so they loved her, you know, and, 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 and it was, so I'm, I, I was so curious, what is that? Like, what is that that makes people hate you so much? And I realize it's their fear and their own fear. And, um, but that she made people love her as well too. She's one of the first artists to, not the first, but one of the first to integrate Carnegie Hall. You know, she was integrating audiences, singing about lynching and really turning it into a performance and forcing people to listen. Um, but she had a magnetism and I think it's because her love was as big as her fight. And so I, I, what I love about, there's a wonderful book and if you ever get a chance to read it, please check it out. It's called With Billy. And that's actually how we get the first glimpse of Jimmy Fletcher, um, his, his experience with her and falling in love with her. And, and, um, and I just love that these people's experiences, the consistent thread throughout it is that she allowed people to be who they are. She loved them, not just accepted them, but celebrated them. She received them and allowed them to be who they were in that moment as they were, you know, with no judgments. And I think that's what made people really, really love her and just feel, you know, just well, such I a connection I think she's gonna to be her. connected to you for the rest of your life. What an incredible performance. I, 
some parts have to go though. So I'm going to be a healthy person again. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's, it is true. And I, and I welcome it. I, I want her around forever. All right. Well, we've come to our last question, unfortunately. Um, so Roger, the honor is yours. Okay. Andra, I, I, we've met a couple of times at music events. I remember meeting you at Clive Davis at his event. Yeah. And okay. I yeah. followed your singing and it's just, you're a wonderful singer. Thank you so um, much. So I'm curious how this happened that you became an actress because first of all, you took to it. So it seems so natural mm -hmm. uh, and it's so impressive, but it's also very brave. You're naked in this movie. You're yeah. doing much more than just the average debut acting. I wish um, somebody would have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know that going in? Before I went into it, you know, I wish somebody would have let me know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I would have done it the same. <laughs> did Lee tell you? Did Lee tell you he he wanted to do all of that? Oh yeah, he did. I, that was one of his very first questions to me was, "Are you comfortable with nudity?" And my response was, "No, I don't. Again, I don't want to do this movie, but I am comfortable with it if we're telling the truth about her story." I, I was more. I was the what made me uncomfortable was the idea of sugarcoating Billie Holiday or trying to do a PG version or a PG thirteen version of Billie Holiday. That is nonsensical to me, and so. So I was, um, yeah, I, I, I knew he definitely did bring it up to me. We definitely talked about chopping all my hair off, although it's growing back. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, kept, we talked about- you, you kept the weight off. I, I yeah, I, I mean, I've gained some back because I needed to be healthy because on set it was, it was, um, that was the other part of it was the starvation. I, I did, not the whole time while I was losing the weight, but while I was on set and before coming to set, I did start to um, deny my body <laughs> the proper nutrition. <laughs> but it's also because to me, I just thought if I walk on set and we do a sex scene where I'm naked and Billie Holiday has a six pack, like, come on sis, you know what I mean? That's not gonna work. Like, so it was like, let's have a period body, like how, you know, looser skin as it sounds gross, but you know, kind of looser things and just, you know, a period body. It needed to look authentic. So um, I, did, I, I knew about the stuff that what, what I wanted to ask you about the acting was, now this is your first movie, it's your only movie, it's your first movie. Do you want to do more movies? Is this something you wanted to do that you wanted to go into acting? Um, this is my last movie as well as my first. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Not if we have said anything to say about no, it. No, I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm, I'm kidding. You know, it's actually funny though, because on set, my co-stars literally laugh at me. Trey and Tyler laugh at me all the time. Like, we thought she was retired. But I, because on set, it was, there were just, it was, I mean, it took everything, you know what I mean? And so, and when you're in it, at least for me, for the first time, I didn't have a frame of reference. So when I'm in it, I'm like, this is, might destroy me, but it's worth it, you know what I mean? So I didn't see at the end of it, sort of the healing process and all that stuff. So, um, but I, I definitely will. I will do some, I will definitely do a few more movies. I will tell you that I, I am more interested in sort of the, um, the like writing and directing and producing uh, side of it, just because I have a desire. Yay, oh, that makes me happy. Yay, Carla, she happy about that, good. <laughs> Some people have been like, no, I'm like, damn, could I live please? But uh, yeah. But this so, can't be your only, this cannot no, be your only role. It won't be, I definitely, I definitely wanna do a few more roles. I just am so, so focused and hell bent on telling telling black stories, telling POC stories, telling marginalized people oh, yeah. stories. Because again, it goes back to the fact that we have to understand that is there's a reason why you never knew that Beethoven was African. There's a reason why you never knew in Hidden Figures, three black women were responsible for, were heavily responsible for getting us to space and programming the first computer. Why a slave and his brave act infiltrating the enemy camp is, is largely responsible for the fact that we have an America as we know it now. So mm -hmm. I have a real desire to tell stories like, you know, Ota Benga, like um, uh, Sarah Bartman and, and the, the stories that cover the scope of, again, the struggle and of the, the, the victory and the contribution. So I, I definitely want to want to move into that space, but still with some, with some acting in there for sure. As a musician, I just want to say, this is the year of Sam Cooke and Aretha Franklin yeah. on screen yeah. mm -hmm. and Billie Holiday. It's sort of amazing and wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because again, stories that need to be told. Sam Cooke was, the way Leslie Oldham describes him all the time, Sam Cooke was a motherfucker and he really was. And people need to know that about him. So yeah. And the same thing with Aretha. I'm so excited for Cynthia, for Jennifer. I mean, it's just, 
it's an amazing, an amazing time. And I hope we continue in an upward swing with, with regard to, to these Thank things. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We are wrapped. Thank you so, so much to everybody. Um, this was wonderful. Thank yeah, you. I really enjoyed that. Thank y'all so much for Thank wonderful. You, and then I would love to suggest the collaboration between you and Rihanna. As okay, I, let's do it. Let's do it with right. From what I hear, twin. <laughs> let's do it with twin. Boom. <laughs> like how Beyonce and Shakira did. Like Absolutely. you know, you and Rihanna. Absolutely, because I love her too. Look at her pushing the culture forward all the time, all the time. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I received that. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, guys. So much. It's so nice to see everybody's faces. <laughs> And hey, thanks so much. Tomorrow. Thanks so much, Elise. Yes. I will see some of you tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I signed Thank up you. for tomorrow. So have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.